Hey, 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 Big Dave the Middle-Aged Gamer here with another episode of Ender All Forgotten Stories. And we are on our way to talk to Aranthiel because we got to tell him about what's happened. So let's do it. Don't mind the black load screen. It happens periodically. And they're all in Skyrim. You rarely will get them, but you do get them. Doesn't happen very often. All right, we're inside. Where the hell are we going? That way. Okay, how do we go that way? First, we pull the rug so we don't trip over it. I'm guessing upstairs is probably the way to go. Okay, yeah, we got this. Yes. That's a tall statue. Into the Emporium. But that's ridiculous. We have to at least try to negotiate. You know his demands. There's no basis for negotiation. He has not seen what we have seen. The writings, the memories of the Prophet. If he just realized... Taragar Korak would rather throw away his calm than it had been a mistake. Believe me, I know him. I am sure the Grand Master has a solution ready. After all, he was the one who dismissed Korak's attempts to negotiate so swiftly. First we wait for the group's return. That we will see. But it's been a week. My dams. My sirs. Shit. What took you so long? And where is Constantine? That's a long story. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And those were his final words? I... I can't believe it. Simply another victim of the High Ones. If we do not activate the beacon soon, you won't be the last. Oh, right. The beacon. If it's activated, we'll simply glow the red madness away. Won't we? Or maybe we could. For once in all this, do something that actually makes sense and focus our resources on finding an alchemistical or thaumaturgial solution to this problem rather than trusting in a pile of scrap metal. Oh, by the prophet's ass, won't you just shut up for a minute? All day long you do nothing but babble, getting on our nerves, and nothing you ever say gets any closer to a fucking solution. Woo. So why don't you just shove off to one of the bathhouses? Go torture the washerwomen with your never-ending lamentations. That would be helpful for a change. You will take that back. Will I? Come here and make me. I'd be delighted. Is she guard your this tongue, is blasphemy. wild mage, or... Or what? Are you gonna kill me? That's what you do best, you and your fucking order. Silence! You are angry, Lishari Pegast, and I understand why. But in the moment you let that anger destroy this alliance, Firespark sacrifice will have been in vain. Is that what you want? I... Is that what you want? <clears throat> no. No, it isn't. Good. I am tired of this endless bickering. We have a responsibility, and we will fulfill it. Sheesh. Well said, Oranthia. And how exactly do you think we are going to do that? Without the sources, the beacon is as worthless as a heap of rusty iron. The Chroniclers are on it, and they will find the answer. Novice, tell Commander Aaron to join us. We need to plan the defense of the land. You, Prophet, will come to me as soon as you have recovered. Now, let us get to work. All right, let's get out of here. Jorik is right. A war with Nelen. The sun be praised, you've made it. Hey, Lashari. He didn't deserve this. It's just not fair. Yes, the beacon, the beacon, the beacon. No, it is not. Someone is going to pay for it. 
I'll see to that. I... I have to talk to you as soon as possible. It's about the seal and that letter we found on the mercenaries in old Rationgrad. I believe I'm onto something. Really? Well? Their client is from Inderal. From Ark, to be more precise. Let's not talk here, though. Meet me in the Dancing Nomad. I'll be in the first room upstairs, right at the end of the staircase. And hurry. Very well. I'll meet you after I've spoken with the round thing. Yes. See you there. Sacrifices. This is about your damn pride, Tilor. Nothing else. All right, let's follow him, see where he goes. And we should probably eat something. Uh, no, not the hard breads. Yeah, I guess it'll be the grilled leeks. Okay, looks like Aranthiel's going to his favorite perch. So, we'll follow. I don't use the runes, so no point. What's that about? You're arguing with Natara in the Emporium? Irrelevant. This madman, Koarek. He has completely reshuffled the cards. Now we not only have to deal with the High Ones, but also with him and his fanatics. <sighs> However, there's also good news. You have probably seen it already. You managed to reconstruct the beacon? Physically, yes. And we also know how it works now. And how it can put an end to the cycle. How? It is easier than we thought. The beacon was constructed for one thing, to destroy the High Ones. Once reconstructed, infused with energy and activated, lit as the Pyreans called it, it can banish the High Ones from this plane of existence. And here I thought things were going to be complicated. It is complicated if you try to understand how it works. You know that the High Ones are not made of flesh and blood as we are. Essentially, they can be compared to the cold or to shadows. Omnipresent elements, yet we cannot touch them. Energy, if you will. However, there is a counterpart to each energy. Cold and fire, shadow and light. The High Ones and the Beacon. So you mean that the beacon is some kind of counterpart to what the High Ones are? Yes. Imagine a torch driving away the darkness in the moment it is ignited. This is what the beacon can do, except that the banishing will be permanent. That sounds good. So what's keeping us from lighting it? Shari mentioned sources? Yes, as I said, it needs to be infused with energy before it can be lit. I take it you have noticed the three sockets on its base. They are what it draws its power from. Once they are filled, the beacon can be ignited and the High Ones will be undone once and for all. At least, if the old writings are true. The only thing left for us to find out is what these energy sources are. But we are close. Give the Arcanists some more time and I will let you know if there's any news. In the meantime, get equipped accordingly. 
Some of the Neremes have landed already, and outbreaks of the Red Madness become more and more frequent as we speak. Oh, lovely. Is there nothing we can do against the Red Madness? Distribute some of the special stone shards among the people, maybe? No, there are not enough. And we must keep the few there are in our possession, in case anything unexpected should happen. The only thing we can do to stop the madness is to destroy the High Ones as soon as possible. The Trukesa mentioned something about what happened in Kira. What did she mean by that? Well, it's only fair to tell you. You've always been honest to me, so I will do the same. Have you ever heard of the Night of the Thousand Fires? Vaguely. Between 8,192 and 8,202, there was an underground movement in Kira called the Red Half Moon. They were brought into being by a group of intellectuals and philosophers who, under all the freedom of thought Saldrin granted them, started questioning the reign of the Golden Queen, and thus the Lightborn themselves. Freedom of thought that Saldrin granted them? What do you mean by that? Saldrin saw himself as the god of knowledge, and accordingly he reigned his country. In Kira, no opinion is forbidden, which is why it is home to countless magic schools and universities, where people do nothing but discuss the reason for being all day long. An appealing thought if you hear it for the first time, but a cunning people isn't easy to reign. There have been more revolts and riots in Kira than bones in a graveyard, and the Red Half Moon was the worst of them. So this Red Half Moon tried to end the reign of the gods just like your son did, correct? Correct. Just as my son did. But other than him, they fought like cowards. Terror, dust crystals planted in the marketplaces, and assassinations, you name it. If they killed innocents, they blamed the Golden Queen, and if they killed her soldiers, they celebrated themselves as liberators. However, they never succeeded in putting her down, and neither did she in destroying them, which is why the court turned to the Lightborn for help. A division of the Holy Order led by me, a young keeper of barely 30 winters. Why did you have to come all the way from... Uh Enderal, didn't the Order have a bastion in Kira? None to be taken seriously. You know, not everywhere is the Order as present as here on Enderal, or as it once was on Narem. In Kira, we were ridiculed. I saw the Kiranian keepers who served the Golden Queen. A bunch of decadent gluttons who had dedicated themselves to the court's banquets rather than to the will of the gods. They were pathetic. I see. So what Long happened? After our arrival, we received an anonymous tip on where one of the Half Moon spaces was supposed to be located, in a small coastal village. As we entered it, we were greeted by the township's elders, and the villagers themselves had gathered behind them. You should have seen how they stared at us, as if we were plunderers. I should have seen by then that something was wrong. Uh oh. How come the villagers feared you? Didn't they didn't they know that you'd been sent by their queen? Yes, but if there was one thing the Red Half Moon was good at, it was sowing lies. According to them, we were nothing but butchers who executed everyone unable to recite the revelation word for word. <laughs> well, let me guess, the entire thing was a trap. That's what they wanted us to think, and they did a good job at that. A veiled person here, an archer on the rooftops there. I got nervous, because villagers are not, they bested us in numbers, and they had cattled us. Then a man seemed to charge at us, and I gave the order to draw weapons. It was just the spark they needed. It came to a fight. <laughs> no, not a fight. A massacre. The villagers had pitchforks and shepherd staffs, and we had shadow steel swords, let alone the fact that we were trained warriors. I realized that I had made a mistake a split second after it started, but it was too late by then. My men, they slaughtered them all like pigs. 
At the end of the day, 300 people were dead, and only 10 of them were keepers. What, you couldn't do anything at all to stop the fight? I've never been in a big battle. Even if my men would have stopped, the villagers were blinded with rage and panic. No. From the moment I gave the order, it was too late. So the Red Half Moon set all this up. I get it. But why? Why would they want an entire village slain? Well, what better proof of the Lightborn's cruelty is there than a division of keepers who, out of pure wickedness, slaughtered an entire village, women, children included. If the people had already distrusted us before that, that distrust had turned into hatred, and nothing could have changed that, not even the Golden Queen's heralds. We set sail back to Enderal a week later, Two years after that, the Red Half Moon destroyed itself due to infighting. Ironic, <laughs> isn't it? You panicked and things got out of control. There's no shame in that. Maybe. The Lightborn and the Grandmaster back at that time showed the compassion I wouldn't grant myself. But I learned one thing. And that is that I will never again let fears about my own life influence my decisions. What happened in Kira was the consequence of my own cowardice and my unwillingness to give my life for a just cause. That will never happen again. There's something I need to tell you. Back on Half Moon Island, the, the High Ones told me something there. What? Karanor Korak sees himself as one of the Emissary 2s, the Messias. Really? That's interesting. Provided this is true, that means that the Emissaries aren't just people who fight the cleansing. They are people who fight for it too. And that also means that whoever granted us our powers and our purpose isn't an enemy of the High Ones, but a neutral party. Not necessarily. The High Ones also said that Korak is wrong and that he isn't really an emissary, and neither are you. I beg your pardon. Well, according to the High Ones, Korak only thinks of himself an emissary because he wants to feel important. What? And the same goes for me? That's ridiculous. They wanted to deceive you, to sow discord. I saw the threat the cleansing posed before anyone else did. And without me, we would have never come that far. Something changed inside me since I fled from my prison. I feel it. And it is the same thing that made you a part of all this. Now, enough of this. Prophet. You were in prison for a very long time, weren't you? 30 years? Yes. Why do you ask? I can't imagine 30 years of imprisonment didn't leave any... Scars. They did. What are you getting at? You want me to trust in your leadership? It's only fair I learn more about you as a person. A fair point. But in the future, just be upfront. I do not like such veiled remarks. So, yes, my time in the prison was harsh. The hunger, the degradation, to name the most obvious. The worst, however, was the isolation. Ironically enough, that was the last thing I had expected, you know. From all the suffering there is, it seems so. Banal. But it isn't. You either find ways to cope with it, or it breaks you. Fortunately, I managed to do the former. For me, it was memories of the time before my incarceration. The prospect of what would come after it. They were my window into the outer world, so to speak. They reminded me that I was more than this deprived creature I had become in those dungeons. Figures. How'd it feel to be free again? Hmm. Strange. Everything seemed too... bright. Too unreal. I especially felt that in the cloister with Narazul's mages. I had difficulty talking to other people, and whenever I did, it felt as if the others were like... wax figures. Like some cruel joke put in front of my eyes in order to mock me. 
And what's it like now? Better. Our mission, my responsibility here as a leader, it has helped me to find my way back into the real world. Actually, I'm surprised you went straight back to the Order after all that had happened. That's a lot of responsibility to take on after such trauma. <laughs> what would have been the alternative? A life as a fisherman? If the things I had to live through taught me one thing, then it was how important it is for me to be right here, right now, doing what I do. In fact, this is precisely what is missing in the world. People who do not let the whims of fate break their resolve. Now, enough of this. We have business to attend to. Real, provide. And that also means that whoever granted us our powers and our purpose isn't an enemy of the High Ones, but a neutral party. Could this veiled woman I told you about be that third party? Or maybe a part of it? Possibly. But we will find out all about that once we've taken care of the High Ones. Now, with the Neremese against us, too, there's only one thing that matters. Resolve. We must not hesitate and allow anything to delay the lighting of the beacon any further. Okay. Alright, so we got everything there. Now we need to get the hell out of here. Yes. Okay, so we got to go back to the Dancing Nomad, which I, I want to say is in the Mobile's Quarter. Okay, not here. Is it the marketplace? I don't remember there being an inn in the marketplace. Alright, well, we'll keep looking for it. We'll find it. Eventually. Okay, four and quarter. Go dancing nomad. Let's go talk to Lashari. 
Boing. Oh fuck! No, 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 no. Are you in there? Kirosh, what? Why? What have you done? These are hard times. I could ask you the same thing. Strange coincidence you're here. Watch your tongue, Shari. Be glad that the blood is already dry, or else you'd be nothing but a pile of bones by now. <sighs> Forgive me. I, I just can't believe it. Anyone but Lashari? Yes. As I know, Nea, but she was a good woman. We both know that we're not involved in this, so please tell me why you and Lashari wanted to meet up here? Were the two of you close? It's been a while since there was a man at Lashari's side. No, no, it wasn't like that. <sighs> so why? It seems there's a traitor in Ark, someone from among our own ranks. Lashari wanted to tell me who was behind the assault at Alt Ration Guard. What? Then... Then this bastard got wind of it. Oh, Kirash, Lashari, why the secrecy? Maybe the murderer has left a clue. We have to search. <sighs> Shit. You feel Lashari's pulse? Her body still has some warmth remaining. I didn't catch the rest of that. But she is dead. Suspicious cap dust bottle. What's this? Let me see. Yes, this could be our clue. A glimmer dust bottle? Couldn't that belong to Lashari? No, certainly not. But come to think about it, it doesn't really help us either. There are so many dust addicts in Ark, it would take years just to count them. Oh, by the name of the sun, I will inform the Order. Shouldn't we keep searching? Yes, yes, you do that. But come back to the temple as soon as you're finished, all right? The Archmagister has found something out about those sources we need for the beacon. Even though he paid a high price for it. God damn. Okay, that pisses me off. I like Lashari. Remind me not to burst into tears. Yes, you should go into the whisper and see what you can Not now, old man. Just lost a dear friend. Careful, my sir. The streets aren't safe at this hour. Okay. All right, we need to blow off some steam. Go to the un uh, to the Undercity Arena. See if the next set uh, next fights are ready. Last penny right out your 
Okay, it's just wait for next battle. Fine. Ah, you've come at the right time. There's a fight soon, and you're the perfect candidate. The twins. Two nasty, hairy beasts of men with even nastier axes. Yeah, I know, the odds are against you, but what should I say? The crowd wants it, I deliver. What do you say? Two oh, versus yeah. one. But judging by how you fought, I think you stand a chance. Still, it'll be dangerous. So, what do you say? Count me in. Old words. All right, then go downstairs and warm up. I'll tell you when we're ready. Madam and may sirs, a cordial welcome to the Dusk Pit. You know who I am, I know who you are, and above all, I know why you are here today. Because you want to see a fight! Alright, let's just get set up real quick. Today, two familiar faces will fight a rookie who you've already grown to love. The twins against the mysterious warrior only known as the Prophet. It is a battle to the death, a battle about gold and blood. Now enough of the words! Time to give you what you've all been waiting for! Warriors, fight! Oh well, so much for that. Maybe we're not ready for that yet. Okay, well that sucked. Right, so where do we need to go? Probably back to the Sun Temple. And that fucking sucked. Man. So the order is starting to fall like flies here. Jeez. Brother, what blessed? How are things? Ah, greetings. Okay, I suppose. This machine really is a science in itself. How's that? Yeah. Plus, let alone the metal, it seems to be some kind of 
conjunction of Pyrean crystals and shadows. Ah, if it isn't the prophet, what's wrong? You look troubled. But recreating this stuff is incredibly complicated. And Lashari, she's dead. Someone murdered her. I know. Shah Rima has already told me. I hardly knew her, but it's horrible. Different ideologies or not, she was a fine young mage, and her knowledge of the Pyrenees was impressive. We need to find the ones who did this, and fast. But you probably already know that. Thank Malfus we just had a breakthrough with the beacon. Yes, Yuslin told me about that. Does that mean we know what it's missing? At least as far as the sockets go, yes. In the old tablets you found in old Dothugrad, there's talk of black embers, which are supposed to be some kind of energy supply for the machine. Black embers? Any clues as to what those could be? This is what we've been asking ourselves over the past few weeks. And then it fell like pelt from our eyes. The Pyreans were talking about the black pearls. All jewels, sometimes known as black stones. They appeared for the first time in the Golden Era, and every self-important noble literally fought to get one in his possession. Apparently, they originated from Stormwind, the old city in the heart of Arctwind. They changed owners for decades, sometimes by violence, sometimes by gold. The whole thing only stumped when the owners took note of an undesirable side effect, if you like. Let me guess, these stones were somehow cursed. No, at least not with any known magic. And that's what's so strange about it. Nevertheless, all of their owners eventually shared the same fate. Countess Katua from Nerim, for example, whose castle burnt down to its foundations. According to a survivor of this tragedy, she was to blame for that. He claimed that he saw her the night it happened, laughing hysterically and dancing in the dining room and summoning waves of fire all around her. She was not previously known to have any magical talent in her. So these jewels somehow give their owners magical powers. Correct. Plus, all of them eventually showed similar symptoms of delusion, like those possessed by the Red Madness do. A peculiar coincidence, if you ask me. That's one way to put it. What happened once word got out to the public that these stones were cursed? Not quite. They... Those who owned the pearl tried to get rid of it, or lock it up somewhere safe. And eventually they fell into oblivion. Tell him your theory, Archmagister. Uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> we believe that the stones carry energy, pure, uncontrolled magic, and that the High Ones use them for their own purposes. You mean the High Ones use these pearls to deliberately drive people into madness? Correct. The pearls' magic make their owners powerful, but the High Ones befoul them, so to speak. Like a poison potion. I know it sounds odd, but the parallels are too striking to ignore. The red shimmer in the victim's eyes, the slow descent into madness, and ultimately this irrational, destructive act of violence. But all this happened centuries ago, didn't it? I thought the High Ones only appeared just before the cleansing. That's what we thought too, but it seems we were wrong. Maybe the High Ones never leave our planes at all, even after the cleansing. Maybe they are even part of this world, just like the tides or the elements. And the death of the gods is only what really sets them rolling, so to speak. But what do the High Ones get out of it? Why would they do that? That's a question I've been asking myself since we first learned of the cycle. Who knows? Maybe they like for us to suffer. Or maybe they see us as we see ants, whose lives simply mean nothing. Or maybe the very concept of intentions is meaningless to them. I see. And you think that the magic of these black stones could give the beacon the energy it needs? That's what we think, yes. Nothing else in this world possesses that much raw power. Which is why you will find them for us. Of course! But if the Pai Ones poison these stones, isn't it dangerous to bring them here? No, because we know what we are dealing with. Unlike those who fell victim to the stones. Imagine them as a powerful, magical sword. A fool won't know how to wield it and will eventually cut himself with it. A seasoned warrior, however, can use its power for his purposes. Which doesn't mean, however, that we will be careless with them. What we need is their energy, and once we have transferred that to the beacon, their shells will be useless to the High Ones. 
In other words, without the energy of these stones, the beacon is useless. Correct. And how exactly are we supposed to find them? Didn't you say that they were scattered all over Vin? That's right. But we don't need all of them. The beacon has three sockets, and that is how many of the stones we will acquire. Arch Magister. I studied the history of the pearls as a young arcanist, and I think that my notes might give you some hints as to where you should start looking. Give me until tomorrow. By then I will have prepared the relevant excerpts. All right. Anything else I should know? Just come to me whenever you have questions. And hurry. I take it you have already noticed this, but Nerimi's troops are roaming our land and building outposts, and the Red Madness is also getting worse as we speak. Now go, Prophet. The sooner we find these stones, the better. Okay. So we're kind of stalled out here. And then otherwise, we are looking at three star fights or quests. Okay. Prophet? Okay. Alright, now it sounds like we need to start... ...looking at other things we need to do. Well, we were working on this, and we know what we still have to fight. It's also nearby. Here's to hoping the rest of it hasn't repopped yet. Wow, I've got a lot of learning and crafting points. That's right, because I gained some levels out of this, and I've got no pennies. There you go, and that's why we haven't done anything with them. Alright, so back to Euro's place. We're going to try this one more time. As I said before, here's to hoping we haven't the place hasn't reset. If it has, uh, we're going to be in for it.
Okay. There's a key we need to find somehow. What's the key called? Oh, it doesn't say. All right, that's Fallout that does that. Tells you what key you need. And I'm not even sure that's Fallout 4. I know it's Fallout London, but... All right, so back down below. And here's to open. All that's left is that one big giant elemental... Okay. Fungi real quick. Okay, still don't have enough to do. A full set. Okay, doesn't look like anything is repopped object wise. Critter wise is another story. But the fact that it's still quiet right now is a good sign. need to get up there and the big fella is there so that's a good sign and that is my still my current weapon isn't it absorb six points of health Oof. Not the way to go. Here we go. And there is the big critter. We're going to save. Time to recharge this thing? Eh, not yet. Okay. Hey, where'd he go? to Oh 
We got him. Holy crap, we got him. Spell Tome Elixir, rank three. Don't mind if I learn it. Void Salts. Yeah, weakness to shock. And Yero's last words. Oh, shit. A lot better than Shadow Sting. Replacing a dagger with a dagger. Kind of funny I'm sticking with daggers here, but hey, it is what it is. A successful fight means we save. Yeah, we save. Alright, another recipe for Ambrosia, which we already know. Key from Euro's hideout, we'll take that. The Dream Flower, an essay. The book seems to be written by a magister who researched a plant called Dreamflower. Some parts of it are especially eye-catching for you. And so the Alyani, the natives of Araziel, reserved the honor of the Dreamflower for their best warrior. Mashed and mixed with the blood of a human heart, usually taken from one of their enemies, a soul gem, and a bit of glimmer dust. At least that's what I think it says, yeah. It became a potion which was then given to a warrior in ceremony, according to the myths, with an unbelievable effect. Not only did the potion instantly recover the health of a person, it even gave a blessing which was supposed to allow the user to lead a happy and fulfilled life until they died. While this seems to be superstition, there seems to be at least some truth to it. Archeolo archaeological findings bleh, show that there were some warriors of the Aliani who had a high vitality even in old age. That the dream flower can't be found in Enderal anymore, and thus quite regrettable. Its alchemical value appears to be tremendous. Anything in here? No. Exclusive health potion. Let's read the notebook. Although many of the notes are soaked with water and unreadable, some passages are still decipherable. They seem to be written by Magister Gero and to deal with a plant called Dreamflower. The following part seems to be the most interesting for you. The assumption that the uh, Dreamflower has such a drastic effect on the physique of a human is, is a misconception in my opinion. There is no alchemical explanation for that. Instead, I think it is uh, that it changes the connection of the Arcanist to the sea of eventualities in such a way that it allows the user to jump from one thread of reality to another, always to that always to that one which yields the best outcome for the user at any given moment. Further research is needed, but I can see potential. And here's the recipe for Dreamflower Elixir. And in the scroll sack is a paper roll and a scroll of the Light Herald, which sets light lost ones on fire. but relatively weak ones. We need to eat something. Let's eat some roast pheasant. But we finished this one. I still can't believe I beat this guy. And we finally finished our first three-star side quest. And it happens to be possibly our oldest one. That was... Okay, cool. And we got ourselves a better weapon out of it, so, uh, yeah. Alright, let's get out of here. I'll tell you what, that's the sort of thing that will help us considerably as we push forward. Might also help us in the pits, too. Um, here we go. <laughs> Alright. And it does. We have a, frag a fragment right eye. Started. Home of the Forsaken. Find the lost fragments. And an Eterna Dagger. 26 damage. Doesn't quite do as much as Gero's last words, but 
That I will stash in case we end up doing some enchanting. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Time check is 2 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning, honey. Got you sleeping. You must be sleeping. And in case you're wondering, that's a Motorhead song. I think it's Fast and Loose. Okay, well, we need to... We need to get back home. Okay. All right, first things first. Actually, no, we're going to hold on to that cuz that's really useful right now. Okay, all right, we cannot dis uh, dismantle Shadow Stain, or we already did. Anyway, let's read the, uh... Okay, it's a it's a miscellaneous thing, so we can't really so we can't read it per se, which kind of sucks. Yeah, we got some enchantables to put up, the rings, and the Eterna dagger, and we can shell shadow sell shadow sting. Bleh. Could net us a couple. Uh, could net us a few hundred pen uh, hundred pennies or so, maybe. Okay. All right, we'll grab some King's Mead. We're gonna need that. And okay, holding on to these because there's no need for them right now. May never need to be. We got some stuff to sell, and we need to find... Oh, we're running out of time. Now we need to find a cooking pot. Actually, there should be one uh, kind of near us. It'll be in the Golden Sickle. It's just a matter of getting to it. There it is. We can do our cooking here. It's not that far away. 
and we'll also wander back to the smithy right in front of our house and do our smithing rearranging. At least do some. Some things. We got no pennies out of that. No, we did not. We got useful things instead. Which is fine. Okay. Put up extras. Actually, we need to make more food, don't we? And all we can make is archaic vegan soup. And only one of them. Fine. Whoops. <laughs> eh, that's fine. Alright, we got dimensional rift. You know, I forgot I even had this. I could I could use that in the pit fight, which we'll do next time. And we got some goodies to queue up for the next round. So, what's shield nourishment? Oh, okay, it's warded base. Ambrosia, healing spells also restore stamina. You know, that would make taking the fever a little more worth it. And of course, the ability to get uh, add up spells cheaper. Yeah. All right, let's get out of there. We don't need to be there. So we made one thing of food. This would be the other reason why it's more useful. All oh, right. Oh, and now I can cook other things. That's fine. Okay, you know what? Since they're so light, I'll make a whole bunch of them. <laughs> uh, old force of habit with Skyrim. That's why this keeps happening. I hit Y to trigger... Uh, well, at least we got that back. I hit Y to um, execute the thing when it asks if you want to do this. You know, Y for yes, get it. But Y is also the button that you trigger to meditate. I really should probably fix that, but I'll forget. You know, we know how my brain works by now, right? Okay, so... All that's left to do for now is to sell stuff, but it's the middle of the night, nobody's awake. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna find a signpost. All oh, right, we need to put up some smithing stuff. There's a signpost right next to it. We're going to go back to the arena. And we're going to stand right in front of the girl we need to talk to for the fights, and we'll set up one for the next round. We got a better weapon. I remembered that I got myself a really useful little talent in the last episode. Okay, you lost your marble there, Wave. But yeah, this episode, kind of a buzzkill. Don't mind me, I'm going to be talking about this for a while, because I really liked Lashari, and I thought there was going to be a bit of a romance going on there. Alright, there's Rasha. And we are going to leave it here. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get the latest and greatest videos as they come in and to help this channel grow. This has been Big Dave the Middle-Aged Gamer. This is Enderal Forgotten Stories. I'll see you all next time.